In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's wonderful to be, to be with you again uh, after a few months away. Just covering for Father Patrick today. He's in London. I'm Father Andrew, and I'm from the seminary in Oscott in Birmingham. Today we celebrate a wonderful feast, the feast of Christ the King, which is why we have the white vestments. It's also Youth Sunday, which is why we have a second collection. Ten years ago, uh, Pope Francis hosted World Youth Day in Rio de Janeiro, and he said to the people there, I want you to do two things. First, he said, read the Beatitudes. They'll do you good. And then he said the second thing is, read Matthew 25. We're going to read Matthew 25 today. He said, read Matthew 25 because it tells you what kind of king Christ is. And it also gives us, whether we're young or not so young, a plan of action. More on that after the gospel, but first, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Wherefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I'm going to look after my flock myself and keep all of it in view. As a shepherd keeps all his flocks in view when he stands up in the middle of his scattered sheep, so shall I keep my sheep in view. I shall rescue them from wherever they have been scattered during the mist and darkness. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will show them where to rest. It is the Lord who speaks. I shall look for the lost one, bring back the stray, bandage the wounded, and make the weak strong. I shall watch over the fat and healthy. I shall be a true shepherd to them. As for you, my sheep, The Lord says this, I will judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and he goats. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Death came through one man, and in the same way, the resurrection of the dead has come through one man. Just as all men die in Adam, so all men will be brought to life in Christ, but all of them in their proper order. Christ as the first fruits, and then, after the coming of Christ, those who belong to him. After that will come the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, having done away with every sovereignty, authority, and power. For he must be king until he has put all his enemies under his feet. And the last of the enemies to be destroyed is death. For everything is to be put under his feet. And when everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will be subject in his turn to the one who subjected all things to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, escorted by all the angels, then he will take his seat on the throne of glory. All the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate people one from another, as the shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you whom my Father has blessed. Take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you made me welcome. Naked, and you clothed me. Sick, and you visited me. In prison, and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say to him in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry or, and feed you or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and make you welcome, naked and clothe you, sick or in prison and go to see you? And the king will answer, I tell you solemnly, insofar as you did this to one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. Next, he will say to those on his left hand, Go away from me with your curse upon you to the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you never gave me food. (coughs) I was thirsty, and you never gave me anything to drink. I was a stranger, and you never welcomed me. Naked, and you never (coughs) clothed me. Sick and in prison, and you never visited me. Then it will be their turn to ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger or naked, sick or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer, 
I tell you solemnly, insofar as you neglected to do this to one of the least of these, you neglected to do it to me. And they will go away to eternal punishment and the virtuous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. When Christ was on earth, what kind of king was he? A most unusual king. In those days, kings didn't walk everywhere like Jesus did. They didn't occasionally ride into town on a donkey either. They didn't associate with tax collectors and sinners And they certainly didn't have as their throne the instrument of torture that is the cross. And yet, from that most unlikely throne, Christ established his kingdom. He was a most unusual king. But Christ is no king stuck in the past. He's alive. So what kind of king is he now? He's still a most unusual king. He's a king who feeds the hungry and gives drink to the thirsty. We are the hungry and the thirsty. So what does he do? He feeds us with his body and blood. No other king does that. He's a king who welcomes strangers. We were those strangers, but not anymore. Now, he calls us friends. No other king does that. Christ is a king who clothes the naked. We are the naked. Our sins, they strip us of dignity. While Christ, the king, clothes us. Clothes us with the garment of mercy. If we let him. Christ is a king who visits the sick and the prisoners. We are those people. We all have temptations, habits. We're all in the same boat. They can make us spiritually sick. They can lock us up in a kind of prison. While Christ comes into that prison and he heals our sickness. Again, if we let him. No other king does that. Christ was, Christ is, a most unusual king. But there's something else. Christ the king doesn't live in a palace. In a mysterious way, he lives in those around us. Here and out there. Those around us who are hungry and thirsty, strangers, naked, sick and in prison. And he tells us this morning that if we serve him in them, then we will be counted as the blessed ones. Let's think then. How might we do that? There's more to hunger than lack of food. There's more to thirst than lack of water. So yes, we can set up a standing order to give to a worthy cause, great. But it can't stop there. What about those around us who hunger just for a word of encouragement? 
What about those around us who thirst for a sign of friendship? Someone at work who isn't particularly popular. Someone in our class or year group who has no friends. Talk to them. And there's more to nakedness than lack of clothing. Gossip, spreading rumors, that kind of thing strips people of their good name. Well, we can clothe them by using social media responsibly, respectfully, charitably. As for prison, my goodness, many more people are behind bars than we think. For some, their own home is a prison. That prison might be only two doors down from us. Could we perhaps visit? Christ was a most unusual king. Christ is a most unusual king. A king who is present in our neighbor in need. One last thing. Christ is a king who will judge us. He'll separate the sheep from the goats. In the Holy Land, where the Lord preached, they have different breeds of sheep than we have. Just Google Israeli sheep and you'll see what I mean. Sheep and goats out there look so similar, it's really hard to tell them apart. But a good shepherd can. Well, our good shepherd will tell the difference between those of us who have served him in our neighbor and those of us who haven't. We won't be able to fool him. The wicked ones in this morning's gospel, they try to fool him. They say that they've ministered to him. That word minister. Only the wicked ones say they've ministered. And it's a technical word in the Gospels. Those wicked ones, they're pretending that they've not only served Christ, but that they had a special mission from God. And they've been loyal to that mission. It's a load of old rot, of course. And the Lord is not fooled. He sees that they are goats. And he sends them packing. Brothers and sisters, no one wants to be a goat. Unless, of course, we're the greatest of all time. Speaking for myself, that ain't going to happen. So let's think on this morning. We will be judged on how we've reached out to those in need. Because where they are, there is Christ our most unusual king. We stand now to profess the faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We make our prayers a petition now to God the Shepherd, who cares for all the flock. For the leaders of the church, that they may lead with compassion. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Pope Francis, as he travels to the Climate Change Conference in Dubai. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For leaders of nations, that they may work to protect our common home. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. For an end to the fighting in the Holy Land and Ukraine. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. For young people, especially those in our parishes, that they experience Christ's love for them in all that they do. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have passed beyond this world, that they may dwell in the Lord's house forever. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own intentions, let us pause for a moment in silence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously us. For the prayers of Our Lady, Queen of Peace, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of death. Amen. Loving Father, as our prayers rise before your throne in heaven like incense, may they find favor in your sight. For we make them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption. And making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love 
and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Lord, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. <laughs> the mystery of faith.
therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have gathered before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And, and let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally.